Hi, this is Jason Parr from Blinky Shine Wolf Management, Hightower Advisors Company. I'm here today to present Under Par, our estate and wealth plan ideas. Under Par is created from my my last name, Par, and my interest in golf. I love it. It's a passion of mine. It's been a lifelong passion. I love to play and hopefully can share some thoughts around estate and wealth planning with a little bit of a different spin. I want to talk to you today about four areas. One, irrevocable trust plan around college education. Two, gifting in 2022. Three, Roth planning in 2022. Four, business succession plan around with key person and life insurance. As with any of the things we discussed today, we always recommend that you consult with your tax advisor, CPA, and lawyer. As wealth advisors, we work with these persons and entities to facilitate our clients' uh, implementation of these ideas and, and help them serve our clients' as best needs. But we always recommend that with specific questions, you consult with your tax advisor, CPA, and lawyer. The first idea I'd like to talk to you about is irrevocable trust planning as an alternative college plans. Traditionally, we're accustomed to 529 plans, Coverdale plans, widely accepted, widely known, widely been in use for several years. Great plans, great opportunities, great options. The downsides are, are sometimes what we see with some of our clients is the limitations that are, are inherent with these plans. For example, 529 plans are de typically derived from states college plans with respect to college costs in within the state. So with each state, there's different limitations on the amounts of contributions. There's income limitations in terms of the persons that can contribute. And typically, the, the amount that can be held in a 529 plan does depend on the cost of college within that specific state. Coverdale plans, conversely, are limited to $2,000 per child per year. So just by, the stand, by that alone, it, those plans typically don't generate high amounts of holdings over a period of time. So with those limitations, we want to talk to you about irrevocable trust planning. With an irrevocable trust created for, for the benefit of, say, a college student or a minor planning to go to college, the funds can be contributed to the irrevocable trust, and then certain covenants and requirements can be set forth within the trust to administer the plans of the, the grantor with respect to paying for college educations and related expenses. The limitations of income and whatnot are, are not a, inherent with an irrevocable trust as they are with 529 and Coverdale. The other issue with irrevocable trust is that the, the gifts or contributions to that trust by the grantor are, in the, in the very nature, irrevocable. So when decisions are made to fund and create these irrevocable trusts, it is wise consideration to make the, the plans for now and for the future with respect to the life of the trust. As with any transfers of, of high amounts into a in trust, there's also considerations with respect to gift and the amounts of gift exclusions and, and annual and lifetime exclusions that will be factored in as well. Those are clearly apparent with respect to a trust and any contributions that you would be making to an irrevocable trust need to have a consideration with respect to the annual gift limit, which is $16,000 for 2022, as well as the lifetime uh, gift exclusion or ex annual lifetime exclusion, which is $12.06 million as of 2022. With those factors considered, we believe that the irrevocable trust is a great option for uh, many of our clients as well as potential clients with respect to how they view college planning for their children, grandchildren, and other minors they wish to have assist in that, that vehicle. The second topic I'd like to discuss today is gifting. You know, it is a season, you know, end of the year, beginning of the year, we hear a lot about gifting and, and the time of year to make your contributions with respect to beneficiaries, to charitable organizations. It's a great American way of showing support and also a great uh, vehicle option under the Turner Revenue Code. The current limit for gifting to an, any, any individual or person or entity is $16,000 per year. There's a couple exceptions. Gifts gifts of for educational expenses paid directly to a university or college has no limit. Um, so that's one, vehicle, one option is that we advise clients that are looking to perhaps 
make a direct payment to a tuition for college and you can really uh, exceed the $16,000 limit on an annual basis without, without having much concern. The second option, a lot of our clients set up charitable organizations to fund gift contributions on an annual basis. Those charitable organizations then in turn derive direct those funds to the recipients. So from the standpoint of our client's benefit, uh, a lot of times you receive a tax deduction for a contribution or charitable contribution to a qualified uh, tax exempt entity, which is most commonly a 501c3. This is another way to avoid or to bifurcate the $16,000 limit and also affect a very charitable motive. And the final option, you know, under gifting that we want to talk about today is when it respects to uh, transfers of wealth from a parent to a to a to a son or daughter um, or a grandchild. Uh, sometimes there's options available for loan versus gift, and the, the the motive behind that is going to be driven by the use of the funds. A lot of times, our clients will see their children or grandchildren want to acquire a business, want to start a business, want to have legitimate uses for the for the source of funds that are driven around business and trader business driven. So there, with respect to that, there's options when it comes to loaning the money to the children using a loan vehicle with proper documentation and business purpose versus considered a gift. So we've worked with we've helped several clients with respect to that and it's something to keep in mind as you set forth your 2022 plans. The third area that I want to talk to you today about is Roth planning, 2022. Currently, an individual can contribute $6,000 per year to a Roth. And if you're 50 or older, you can contribute $7,000 per year. Uh, Roths are non-tax deductible contributions that generate non-taxable income once the money is in the, the Roth. Meaning that if you contribute $6,000 into a Roth in any given year and that $6,000 grows to $6,500, by the end of that year, you're not that $500 is not taxable. Um, what's the idea around this is is commonly called the backdoor Roth idea, which is to take an exception to the $6,000 or $7,000 limit, and to take money out of a qualified plan, which would be an IRA or a 401k, and contribute it into the Roth. And those direct rollovers or contributions are not subject to that annual limitation. So. If you're in a year of income expectations that are lower than normal, um, you may want to consider rolling over or contributing from a qualified IRA or 401k an amount into your Roth before this uh, window or slash loophole closes. And that is something that is currently on the table, but with respect to the Build, build Back Better plan that was recently uh, discussed and is currently being discussed as, as a potential change to the law in 2022. Um, we're advising clients that the, the law as it is right now does permit these rollovers uh, and contributions to exceed the six or $7,000 limit and it's something to look at and, and consider as we move into the new year. The fourth option I want to talk to you today about is business success planning around key person insurance. Key person insurance is commonly an insurance obtained by a business on a key person within that organization. That person may be an owner, maybe an executive, maybe a partner or shareholder. There's, there's options around this and there's a lot of reasons why businesses do that. But one of the main reasons now is given the current market climate and conditions is retaining talent um, to Putting, it, putting forth a plan for your business in case talent does leave. We're, we're experiencing the great resignation. We're experiencing un unheralded retirements you know, uh, much earlier in life than what many in the past have, have experienced. So business owners, businesses typically want to preserve an income source or to offset any changes or disruptions in their business through the loss of key people. Key person policies is one option for that. Um, and it's another option in terms of to protect the owners in case uh, one of the partners or another key member leaves a firm and that, and that leaves a, a tremendous gap and an owner needs to hire a replacement or to reorganize the company. A lot of times that can lead to 
cost, lost revenue, lost income. The key person is a way to to secure against that loss, that change in change in life, change in business. Now, tax deductibility does vary depending on the type of organization you are. Um, C corps. Uh, typically, there's no tax deduction for this kind of policy. The same would apply for a sole proprietorship. Uh, but with an S Corp and LLC, if the key person policy is for the benefit of the employee, including the, the employee's wages, typically there is a level of deduction for the business. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we always advise and recommend that you consult with your CPA, tax advisor, and lawyer with respect to any of the ideas. And please feel free to contact us. Uh, my name is Jason Parr, Blanky Shine Wealth Management. This is Under Parr. And for anyone who posts a question or anyone's feedback, we are glad to send a dozen of our golf balls to you uh, in response to this post. Have a great day. Thank you. And we hope to hear from you soon.